morning. Joe Deary, Powerful Improvements, Putnam, Connecticut. Out here in beautiful Thompson, Connecticut today on their most beautiful golf course. This place is just fantastic. This is across the street from the Thompson Speedway, uh, which is also a big deal around here. There's racetrack over there for your exotic cars and motorcycles and there's go-kart track in the back and then uh, modified uh, cars and sprint cars and stuff like that race around the oval tracks, a lot going on. This house is beautiful, beautiful old colonial. It's the only one on this strip of land that it sits right on the golf course here. It's just beautiful. And uh, this is a local business owner. She owns a beautiful restaurant in town. And we washed the restaurant for her this summer. And we washed this house this summer. And she has us back to do gutters. She says she has some issues going on up top. She's got some gutter guards, something is clogged. We're gonna go check it out. Gutter cleaning all day today. And we're gonna make over a thousand dollars just gutter cleaning today. Uh, I'm going to show you how that's done. We're going to play with some different toys today and have a good time. Let's go up there and check that one right, out. We've got real simple metal guards up here, which I just pulled out. These are very similar to the ones that I install. They just click under and click in. They're pretty cool. And they've got a nice uh, ridge here between, so they they create somewhat of a, a beam. So there's some rigidity between them so they don't collapse at the seam. And this gutter has simply got a big boogie on it which is what we've counted on today. We quoted a lady today for just popping drains. So that's what this is. I'm just pulling this one guard off. I'll be picking that up, don't worry. You people worry too much. Too much worrying, okay? Just watch, don't worry. All right, and that's good. Make sure this is nice. We'll hang out here for a minute. Let it drain. Make sure our gutter face is clean. Usually I got a rag in my pocket for that. I don't at the moment. So like I said, I'm going to clean everything I can see here from this one guard. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Yes, I'm putting the mud down the drain. That's going to go, okay? You can hear it go. All right, and that's nice. Put the guard back on, and then we gotta go to the one on the other end. All right, check this one out. I think I found the problem. Oh yeah, whole bird's nest in here. So that's what happens if you don't close off the ends of the gutter guards uh, which I don't usually do completely. I bend them down a little bit, but I have had a few callbacks for people saying, hey, you know, birds are getting under and here we go. Here's another one, evidence. So I would say this is very likely what's clogging this drain. Just trying to go gently to make sure there's nothing live in here. All right, look at that. And I brought the bucket up here this time, okay? So you can calm down. All right. That's nice, very nice. Doesn't seem to be anything down in there. Let's take a look. That looks good. That looks good. I'm up here on the 32 today. My 24 would reach, but my 24 has been giving me fits. The thing does not want to ratchet down I'm pretty sure it's at the end of its life. Probably is slightly bent from all the work it's gotten. <clears throat> and it seems that I'm replacing at least one ladder per year. So I believe later today when we're done, I'm gonna go to Lowe's. See? And uh, pick up a new 24. And a big factor in ladders you got to consider is weight. All right, this 32 foot ladder that I'm on right here, this thing weighs 63 pounds. I'm gonna need two hands for that. <clears throat> that's a super heavy ladder, 63 pounds. You know, it's a lot to lever around when you're only 190 pounds or so. My 24 foot ladder weighs 43, no, excuse me, 33 pounds. That's a big drop. So. You know, that ladder weighs 30 pounds less than this ladder. So which one do you want to move around the most? Obviously, it's that one. 
a 28 foot ladder, which I'm considering weighs 50 pounds. So quite a bit more than that, quite a bit less, less than this, but I'm trying to factor like, I don't know, I use the 24 a lot. I think that's the ultimate way to go. The occasion that I have to use this versus using the 28 all the time, I think I'm saving a lot of energy on the 24. So anyway, very likely buying a new 24 today. That one will go on Craigslist for sale for like 75 bucks. Someone will take it. Some painter will want it for scaffolding or something. And uh, we'll make some of our money back on a new ladder. All right, let's go down and do the front gutters. All right, we're on the front gutter. Nearly the same thing. Big nest. So I think future me will be back here again trying to do something for the ends of these. I can probably take a piece of screen that I have from other guards and cut it in a triangular shape or something and put it in here to block that. So we'll be back again. I'm going to probably come back here again in November or so because she does have some gutters in the back on that porch over there. You can't see it, but there's a porch over there that does not have guards that is right under the tree. So that will need to be cleaned again in the fall. So I'll be back and I'm going to suggest that we trap the ends of these guards and I'll come up with some kind of technique or price on that. You know, what I try to do, you guys ask a lot about gutter pricing, gutter cleaning, that kind of stuff. $50 each time you go up the ladder as a general rule, okay? For me, if I got to go on the ladder, it's 50 bucks. So I look at things like how many ladder placements. That's one way that I am uh, estimating my jobs. You know, typically we're using an extension and whatnot. And then if there's guards or something like this, you've got a little bit of an additional charge also besides your uh, minimum $50 per ladder. I am slightly allergic to bees. I don't know if you guys can see there's electric wire coming out right there. Right there. There's all sorts of bees actively going in and out of there. So we'll point that out to the homeowner. And I'm staying away from it. All right, that was a little tricky getting under that. Now that I'm up in there, I'm wishing I still had my nippers on the truck, but I took them off. So I got to get some nippers back on the truck because no one's going to have a problem with me trimming a couple of those branches while I'm up there, you know, especially even for my own safety, right? All right, so this one looks good without even doing anything to it. I'm not even going to pop that cover. This is the cleanest one of the bunch except that the guard doesn't reach all the way to the end. So I don't know, that's kind of strange. I'm surprised there's nothing in this one completely under this tree. But I think we're gonna to put together a package to maybe, you know, fix that, close it off, trim these branches away when we do it off the house. This stuff doesn't need to be here. You can see there's been cutting here. Cut right here, ba boom. We'll take it in small sections so we don't knock ourselves off the ladder. Drop it on the ground. I'm more than capable of that kind of work. And we have all the tools to do it. This one, we walk the roof with a blower in the fall. So there's another job coming here. I guess it's uh, tea time, right? What is it? Two past nine, and here they go. Seriously, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> These things just keep coming, man. There's, I don't know. I really don't know anything about golfing, so I thought you all started from the same first hole. So I don't see how that's possible. People going that way. It's just never ending. Some of you guys might remember we drove by the Thompson Dam about two weeks ago and there was no water and you can see now that it's this is actually back to its normal level we walk here quite a bit it's a great recreation area so we are out of the drought and 
water bands everywhere have been lifted, so fantastic. All right, we're set up on the next property and we're out here in beautiful Eastford, Connecticut on Kennerson Reservoir, gorgeous place. I have an annual up the road. Uh, this is the first time I've been to this property and it has old plastic gutter guards. I can see some weeds growing out over there. I'm hoping to only remove the guards that are necessary uh, to get things to drain. I see a bunch on the other end too. So uh, we talked to the lady about depending on what's in here, price will vary. I've got a base price going, but we'll see what we get into. Let's go up and take a look at this first drain together. Uh, to my surprise, that drain looks great. I took the mud off the top of the gutters. I'm gonna go do the next section over there using the 24 so I can reach. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so we've adjusted the work that we're doing here today and consequently have adjusted the price slightly. We're taking these guards off. These gutters, that spout was clean, that was it. Gutters are full completely with mud. Talked to the client and they said they've got a guy that's been coming out and doing it. And apparently all he's doing is cleaning that spout, um, much like we just did. So I got nothing to say except that these are very clearly filled with mud, weeds growing out of them, similar to yesterday. Uh, we're going to go up and remove the guards, manually remove the mud, and then we're going to go up with pressure washer or ball valve or something and rinse these things out completely. And then we're also talking about uh, annual contract here. So now that we've removed the guards, the guards need to be annually maintained. House is due for a house wash, so we got seasonal agreement for next year. And the son lives down the road next door and it looks like we're gonna get him too. So that'll be like three or four houses we have right in this area. So we'll be able to couple it all into uh, a day's work. See? Beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right, gutter guards are all removed and put away. I'm starting from this end and I'm gonna rinse my way back to the truck and then we'll go all back. Obviously we're set up and running and a little M5 rinse, we're gonna be in good shape. All right, we're set up on the middle gutter on the 24 and I get a downspout on each end. So nice and easy. carnage debris mud moss i've thrown it all back in here to the yard where it's dead dog habitat i'm coming through to rinse momentarily so of course we'll make these walkways look better and maybe spray some water on some of the ugly clumps but I'm just going to clean the space up pull hose back here fire the pressure washer up and rinse them out. All right, we're up top, I'll back rinsing, and I got this clean and great flow. I can see the downspout down there flushing right out. This side, no no hardly any trickle down there in that downspout. And this is all clean, and I've been pushing water over there by the gallon, hoping to get that to break free, but it's not, it's not breaking free. So unfortunately, I gotta go get on the ladder on that corner and we'll try stuffing the M5 down the gooseneck. See if we can't get it to flow a little better. Yeah. Just standing water here. Hmm. I think I'll be able to shoot that out. Hold on. Hold on to your hat. Oh, baby. There it goes. Nice. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. It came out fantastic, I'm real happy with it. This is gonna be a nice annual client. We're gonna take the leaf blower, do a little leaf blowing around, make sure everything's nice and clean and blown away from the, from the property, especially on the back deck and the walkways. And then I'm gonna to try to talk to them about some roof washing and potentially getting a house wash done this year because it is pretty bad in the back. Let's see how that goes. All right, job is done. I'm moving down the driveway a little bit. I just did my 
Uh, Mark Kate sent her receipt uh, invoice with the add-on for all of the other work that we did in the flushing of the gutters. And then I actually just sold them uh, roof washing on the front all around those dormers and the entirety of the barn and house wash and taking care of the front stairs and the front walkway also all for the fall of this year. So a nice fat ticket for me. And I'm coming back in November, mid-November to do gutter cleaning again. And they're going to be annual clients. So that was a really nice, nice client, nice ticket for me to, to land. Very well worth my while today. And this is why I am going to continue to drive gutter cleaning, man. Gutter cleaning is the lead driver. I hate to say it. I don't want to do gutter cleaning. I don't know why. I need to stop thinking that way because in my area, that's what's bringing me, you know, house washing and annual clients. And just, it's, it's a huge lead driver because it's a requirement. It's not a luxury item like house washing is a luxury. Gutters have to be cleaned, whether you like it or not. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful this place is. Gorgeous farm, the stonework. Beautiful home behind the trees. Little farm stand, let's see what we can get. I knew I'd see some honey in here. I definitely want some honey. Absolutely get some local honey. And I will take myself one of these peaches for a quick snack. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the fridge. Eggs, green beans. I don't think I want any eggs or green beans. Steaks. I'm not going to steak. Things will just not keep. There we go, buddy. Oh my God. <laughs> so good. Look at that. So good. Not sure if anyone remembers, this is a roof we shot earlier this year. Beautiful sandy roof, super visible coming down this hill. And that looks just fantastic. I'm real happy how that came out. Six months later. All right, we're on the next project, gutters. You saw me up on the roof there, I just blew the gutters out on both sides on the small roof. And from that perspective, I was able to see down these gutters. I can see there's only one big boogie on the end over there. This bottom gutter has just a little bit of debris. So we're about to hook up the snorkel to that blower. That's the Husky 125, the old one that has fallen off a couple roofs. Still works pretty good. Blow this one out. I'm not walking up there because I'll show you the back gutter is brimming full of water. So it's really just plug, unplugging the boogie like we're gonna do on this one and then seeing what we got happening next. These are always fun. It's my favorite. Brimming full of nearly clear water just because of this one boogie right here. So we can make a nice video releasing this. Oh yeah, sweet. All right, baby. That's it, see? Right. last project of the day we're gonna try out the backpack blower we've got time to experiment it's pretty early it's like two o'clock in the afternoon I only got one extension on here this doubles in length I'm not sure if I'm gonna reach that back gutter or not I've been here two or three times now so it's a property that we maintain fairly regularly they're also talking about a seasonal agreement with me for next year but I'm running the big husky Let's go. All right, sorry, I didn't get any film on that. I know you guys would have liked to have seen something there, but it's really hard to wield this thing. Uh, carrying the backpack with the throttle lock on, 
so you can set it to rev and blow. Then you can use two hands to use the poles, but still, even that was very cumbersome. Can't say I loved it. These aluminum poles are heavy. I had these two together, and that one extended about another couple feet to reach up there, so it was pretty heavy. Pretty good size pole. It did a good job. It did blow them all out, but I think uh, a carbon fiber pole set would be in order. It's like a third the weight of this. And if I'm gonna do that, I may as well buy the Skyvac, the Mighty Atom. Get the small Skyvac with the poles for the occasion that I might need it. But the Skyvac also works as a blower, so you could reverse it with its poles and do a lot of this blower work. Um, I did actually purchase a small generator, one of those suitcase generators for uh, camping, and I've already tested it. It does run my nice shop vac. So, I don't know. If I'm going to buy poles, though, we may as well go all in and get the uh, Skyvac. So, interesting day. A lot of different things happened. It is 20 past 2 or so. Okay, and we're out for the day. But that's a good illustration on how you can easily make $1,000 a day. We made a little more than 1000 today on gutter cleaning. Highly recommend it. And it's a huge lead driver, man.